Introduction theme is ancient as the hills, with all their prehistoric glory, but yet of Corny and his friend, we very often long to tell the story. And should we jar the reader s ear, or fail to please his eye observant, we only trust that he will forgive the bush muse and your humble servant the story old Corny built in Dead Man Escape a hut, where mountain shades grow denser, and there he lived for many years. A timber getter and a fencer, and no one knew if he'd a soul above long sprees or split rail fences, unless, indeed, it was his friend who always kept his confidences. There was a saw pit in the range; twas owned by three, and they were brothers. And visitors to Corny's hut was seldom visited by others. They came because, as they averred, old Corny licked a gent infernal. His yarns, if I might trust their word, would made the fortune of a journal. In short. The splitter was a cure, who brightened up their lives' dull courses, and so on Sunday afternoons. At Corny's hut they de hang their horses, they de have a game of cards and smoke, and sometimes sing, which was a rum thing unless, in spite of legal folk, the splitter kept a drop of something if, as twas said, he was a swell before he sought these sombre ranges, twixt mother's arms and coffin gear. He must have seen a world of changes, but from his lips would never fire a hint of home, or friends. Or brothers, and if he told his tale at all, he must have told it as another estot. Though he was good at telling yarns, at listening he excelled not less so, and greatly helped the bushman's tales with yes, exactly so, or just so. In short, the hut became a club like our assembly legislative, combining smoke room, hall, and pub. Political and recreative old Corny lived and Corny died, as we will too on some tomorrow, but not as Corny died. We hope. Of heart disease and rum and sorrow, we hope to lead a married life. At times, the cup of comfort quaffing, and when we leave this world of strife, we trust that we may die of laughing. One New Year Eve, they found him dead. For rum had made his life unstable. They found him stretched upon his bed, and also found upon the table the coloured portrait of a girl, blue eyes, of course. The hair was golden, a faded letter and a curl, and well, we said the theme was olden. The splitter had for days been dead and cold before the sawyers found him, and none had witnessed how he died except the friend who whimpered round him, a noble friend, and of a kind who stay when other friends forsake us. And he at last was left behind to greet the rough bush undertakers. This was a season when the bush was somewhat ruled by time and distance, and bushmen came and tried the world and gave it best without assistance. Then one might die of heart disease and still be spared the inquest horrors. And when the splitter lay at ease, so also did his sins and sorrows. O lay quarry s dead, the bushman said. He s gone at last, and ne er a blunder. And so they brought a horse and dray and tools to tuck the old cove under. The funeral wended through the range and slowly round its rugged corners. The reader will not think it strange that Corny s friend was chief of mourners. He must have thought the bushman hard and of his misery unheeding. Because they shunned his anxious sighs, that seemed for explanation pleading. At intervals, his tongue would wipe the jaws that seemed with anguish quaking, as some strong hand impatiently might chide the tears for prison breaking. They reached by rugged ways at last a desolate bush cemetery, where now our tale is of the past. A thriving town its dead doth bury, and where the bones of pioneers are found and thrown aside unheeded for later sleepers, blessed with tears of many friends, the graves are needed. The funeral reached the bushman's graves, where these old pioneers were sleeping, and now while down the granite ridge the shadow of the peak was creeping, they dug a grave beneath a gum and lowered the dead as gently maybe as Corny's mother long before had laid him down to hush a baby. A bushman read the words to which the others reverently listened, some bearded lips were seen to twitch, some shaded eyes with moisture glistened. Perhaps this weakness was because their work reminded them in sorrow of other burials long ago. When friends turned in to wait the morrow, the boys had brought the splitter's tools, and now they split and put together four panels such as Corny made, to stand the stress of western weather. Perhaps this second weakness rose, from some good reason undetected, they may have thought of other graves of dearer friends they left neglected. Old Corny as dead, he paid his bills, these words upon the tree were graven, and off to swagman down in luck, at Corey's mansion found a haven. If this an explanation needs, we greatly fear we can t afford it, unless they thought of other dead, whose virtues they had not recorded. 
The day had crossed the homeward track, and as the bushmen turned to tread it, they thought and spoke of many things, remembered now to Cornier's credit, and strange to say, above their heads the kookaburra burst with laughter. Perhaps he thought of other friends whose virtues they remembered after. But now the bushmen hurried on lest darkness in the range should find them, and strange to say they never saw that Cornier's friend had stayed behind them if one had thrown a backward glance along the rugged path they wended he might have seen a darker form upon the damp cold mound extended. But soon their forms had vanished all, and night came down the ranges faster, and no one saw the shadows fall upon the dog that mourned his master.